With Faded Clash just around the corner, it's time to take a look at all the new ride lines that came out of this set. Today we'll be going over the protagonist deck in Faded 1 of Miracles Rezael. Rezael is a tempo strategy that looks to utilize strong generic rearguards to gain a ton of value and power, and pair it with Rezael's ability to call units from the drop to get multiple uses out of these cards a turn. This deck generally plays very fast, and it can often stay ahead of the opponent throughout the game. And with Rezael's divine skill basically giving this deck a second life, it takes a lot for the opponent to beat through the defenses. Starting off with the ride line, our grade 1 is Patrol of Gust Ventesta. When Ventesta is rode upon by Incensior, it calls itself in Soul Charges 1. It is also a 10k body while your Vanguard is Rezael. Ventesta gives the deck a free rearguard to start its early game with. When going second, it will typically be a booster for another rearguard, but when going first, it can go to the front row and hit without needing a booster. The grade 2 of the ride line is Knight of Grade Advance Ascensior. When Ascensior is rode upon by a grade 3 Rezael, you can call any grade 2 or less from your drop zone. So with the strategy of the deck wanting to play things down early, Ascensior gives additional value to Rezael early game by being able to retrieve any units that retired themselves early. It can refund the discard cost for riding, or if the opponent retired one of your rearguards doing their turn, you can revive that back. Any of these reasons makes Ascensio a valuable ride for Rezael's grade 3 turn. And then the boss unit is Faded One of Miracles Rezael. Rezael's skills reads that whenever it attacks, you can counterblast one and call two units with different grades from your drop zone as long as the total grade is equal to or less than the amount of damage you have. Then its divine skill shuffles all critical triggers from your drop zone back into the deck, and Rezael gains plus one drive for the turn. Doing the opponent's next turn also, when you would six damage a critical trigger, it counts as a heal trigger for the first time. Because of how generically good Rezael is, essentially any generic card in Keto Sanctuary can work with it. It gets a ton of extra value from cards that retire themselves in the battle phase, since Rezael can bring them back after they are retired. There are also cards that have powerful on-place abilities that can be utilized mid-battle phase. Rezael's Divine Skill gives a lot of value from utilizing your crits to guard early, because you will get them back into the deck when you use it. It also gains power when you use cards that tutor or draw through the deck since it can be compressed into more critical triggers later on. Going through our key units for the deck, our primary call target is Cell Gaon. Cell Gaon, whenever it boosts, if you have more rearguards than your opponent or you've played an order this turn, gets 5,000 power until end of that battle. And then at the end of that battle, you can retire Cell Gaon, look at the top two cards of your deck, add one of them to your hand, and put the other on the bottom of the deck. Cell Gaon is really crazy because it's a 13k booster that doesn't have a grade restriction on it, so as early as turn one, you can start proccing Cell Gaon. The condition for it is very easy to achieve because you just need to have more rearguards than your opponent or play in order. And then it also can retire itself to add a card to hand, which when combined with Rezael, you can retire it before Rezael's attack to look at top two and add one to hand. And then you swing with Rezael and then Rezael can call it back out. And then you're going to be able to use Cell Gaon again to add another card to hand. It doesn't cost any additional resources to do this. The only cost is that it needs to retire itself. So Cell Gaon has has perfect synergy with Rezael, and Rezael can very easily abuse this card. With Selgeon, we are also playing an order package with it. Teeth Valet, when placed, other than from a unit's ability, and you have played an order this turn, can Soul Blast 1 to call a unit from the top 5 of your deck, and it's also a 20k beater whenever it attacks a grade 3 or greater, and you have 4 more units in play. The order often paired with Teeth Valet is Wisdom of Beginning that cleared the world. For Counterblast 1, you get to draw 2 cards, then call 2 cards from your hand. In tandem, this combination of cards allows the deck to have a strong early game. It stops the deck from losing out on cards in hand while being able to build a board. If the deck sees both of these cards on grade 2, then it can have 4 rearguards in play, while only losing 1 card in hand, which is extremely valuable for the aggression the deck wants to achieve. Okay, yeah, this is fucking silly. What? <laughs> Rezael's triple rare support card in the set is Knight of Gentle Beauty Nobia. When it is placed and your Vanguard's Rezael, then you can Cablast 1 and check top 3 and call a card to the board. If Nobia was placed in the battle phase, then you can add the unit to hand instead. Also, whenever it attacks and your Vanguard's a Rezael, you can Soul Blast 1 and it gains plus 10k power. Nobia is really nice for Rezael because of the extra versatility it brings. It is naturally a 20k beater matching Teeth Valley. The first effect also lets Nobia either help build a board or find a specific card to have in hand. If it is called 
hold in battle phase, then it can help find missing orders, persona rides, perfect guards, or just extra shield if needed. No matter what though, Nobia will be a plus one to your card economy. For Rezile's Regalus piece, the primary one is Gratia's Gradle. Rezile's power output late game can feel lackluster compared to most decks if you don't have persona ride. It needs to try to find persona ride as consistently as possible. It's also another normal order for Teeth Valet to proc off of. Racing Angel Ladder is the next best thing if your meta is completely filled with Shiranui. The over trigger best fit for Rezile is Eda's Farm. It acts as an additional critical trigger with the upside to add a card from your drop to your hand. It can get Persona Rides back or any card you have used throughout past turns. The additional crit helps this deck be able to close out games easier compared to the other options the deck has. For your mulligan, the primary card you want to be looking for is Wisdom of the Beginning. If you get Wisdom of the Beginning early on, then it can very easily set up your early game by being able to essentially call two cards and draw you two cards from your deck. It can also help search for Teeth Ballot if you don't have it yet. If you do have Wisdom of the Beginning in your opening hand, then the next primary card you would want is Teeth Ballot to help build out the early game board state in order to be aggressive with. Third is then Del Gaon, since that is your draw engine of the deck, by being able to spam Del Gaon on throughout the early turns and mid game. During your early game, Rezael looks to get value out of the order package to build a board fast. It tries to get through the deck as fast as possible to be able to get as much value as possible from Rezael's divine skill later on. Typically, you will be using Wisdom of the Beginning to draw through your deck and then you call Teeth Fallot from it and then Teeth Fallot will be able to Soul Blast and call another unit out as well. Between Wisdom of the Beginning, Teeth Fallot, and Ventesta, you're going to be able to build an early game board very quickly and start pushing damage against the opponent. During your mid game, Vezile typically spends it trying to get as much value as possible out of Cell Gaon to maintain its hand size. Once the deck gets to 3 damage, it can start calling out a grade 2 and 1 from Vezile's skill and get the most value possible out of it. You typically don't want to use Vezile's Divine skill the moment you hit grade 3, but if you've seen just a ton of crits early on in the game, then what you can do is guard with those critical triggers very aggressively and stay at a low damage, and then use Vezile's Divine skill to shuffle them back into deck on turn 3, and then you have the extra drive to try to dig for other cards and you got the most value out of your critical triggers as possible. If you went second then Teeth Fallot will be able to hit for 20k as well and start being able to really push damage on the opponent. During the late game, Rezile's Divine Skill makes the likelihood of hitting critical triggers a lot easier. It also gives the deck that typically plays faster a potential second life that it normally wouldn't have. It can also use Rezile's on attack skill to call two new front row units, which combined with Persona Ride makes it a solid way to try to close out a game. And here is the deck list. You want to max out on the order package so you can see it as consistently as possible. And both cards by themselves aren't terrible because Wisdom of the Beginning is able to draw two cards from your deck by itself. And then Teeth Ballot can also still be a free 20k beater even without the order paired with it. For your draw engine, you also have Cell Gaon, but you can also play Biscotti, which whenever it's discarded from hand for a ride deck, you can Camblast 1 or Angie Blast 3 and draw a card, and it can do the same thing when put on Guardian Circle. So another play you can do is have Rezile call Biscotti out as well, and then you're going to be able to intercept with Biscotti and be able to get that additional draw since it was on the Guardian Circle. And then we are also playing 3 Aerial Save. We need the Aerial Sage in order to help refund our Catablast because we're using so many between Nobia, Wisdom of the Beginning, and Rezile each turn. So having easy access to Counter Charge is very impactful for this deck. It's also a 15k booster for Rezile, which lets Rezile hit a magic number of 28, not counting any other power boost. Overall, some of the strengths of the deck is that it has a very fast early game. It has a ton of draw power and is able to dig through the deck very quickly. It has consistent options throughout the game because of all of the searchability and draw power. And then it also has a potential second life because of its divine skill. Some of the weaknesses this deck can have is that late game, it might not have enough power to easily close out a game. You are very reliant on having Persona Ride late game in order to hit numbers. It's also very resource intensive because of how much soul and counter blast we are spending throughout each turn. You need to be very careful on what resources you're using throughout the game and know when you should be utilizing your resource managers instead of going for big power plays. Now for you budget players out there, there is a budget variation of this list because it's going to be very expensive. Instead of the typical order package, we have swapped them out for a different order package with Uplifting Him and Kadugan. These together gives the deck a stronger early game because of Kadugan being a 13k beater and him giving two units 
units plus 5k power. It can also be a bit more consistent because Katagun can directly find Uplifting Him, and then Uplifting Him can recycle itself at the end of the turn after you use it. The draw engine has changed a bit, and we added in Sadie and Prosperous Dragon. Prosperous Dragon doesn't gain any power, but it uses Energy Blast, which we are currently not using in this build, and it's able to draw off of that, and you can draw off it early game as well. And then Sadie will just become a solid later game call target from Rezio because it will be swinging 15k by itself and drawing us a card. These changes make the deck faster than a normal variant of Rezio, but later on in the game they lose quite a bit of their firepower since the numbers we are typically gaining now are a bit smaller. But uplifting him and Karagun help mitigate this loss of power. Rezael is a very strong deck with lots of different deck building directions you can take the deck. So even if you don't have all the cards for either of these versions, you can basically put anything in a Rezael and it will work okay because of how generically good Rezael is. And because it's a main character deck, it should generally get consistent support throughout sets during the Divine Z era. So Rezael is a great pickup for anyone looking to get it. Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. I'll see you guys in the next one.